Yo, what's good, Joe? Shaman the Bigger P, and uh, here to share my thoughts from the Showtime triple header uh, from last night. Um, first of all, I have to say, overall, it was a it was an ex it was a great card, great card from top to bottom. Um, it probably supplanted my card for this year. Uh, Spice supplanted um, the card with Curtis Stevenson, Curtis Stevens, and um, and uh, Steve Cunningham from earlier from NBC Sports earlier this year. Um, I really enjoyed this card from top to bottom. Uh, every card was damn good. And, of course, the main event itself um, became a fight of the year candidate, another fight of the year candidate, which was long overdue. <laughs> um, talk about the first fight. It was Devin Alexander versus Jesus Soto Carras. Um, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a very solid, fun opener. Devin was more offensive than what he usually is, and also less ripped, because usually the guy's in pretty good condition. And I know they said they were going to focus in on more, uh, less on the conditioning, just turn it down slightly, um, and just focus more on the boxing. And it showed, um, Devin's, I mean, pretty much Devin showed a glimpse of why I was actually a big fan of his, um, Earlier in his career, when he was actually a little bit, when he was actually a little bit more, um, he was actually more entertaining to watch in the ring. Um, although I couldn't help but feel that this was kind of, it was kind of wild that Devin was on, you know, was the opener, and this was only a ten rounder. I mean, this is a guy that beat that that beat Madonna, probably give Madonna the worst loss of his career so far. Um, probably the only loss that's not really disputed <laughs> in any way. Anything that says that you know Madonna. Um, that Madonna was pretty much dominated from beginning to end. Um, and then Matisse. It's funny that those two uh, probably have a higher profile than him, and he's re he's relegated to doing opening fights. But it is what it is. He did just come off losing the welterweight title to Sean Porter, so that's how it goes. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Devin was more offensively pleasing to watch than usual. And uh, so the cross, God bless him, you know, and a uh, tough, you know, he's a tough guy, tough, you know, really tough fighter, but he just simply didn't have the speed to, you know, he didn't have the speed for every punch he was landing. Devin was landing at least like three to four on him, um, but he kept on pressing forward. And then something more telling happened later in the fight um, when Devin started, you know, breathing hard. Keep in mind, this is a 10 round fight. So, and usually, um, and so usually seeing Devin getting like tired, but probably even was it six or seven, um, you know, had me stroking my chin like, okay, um, maybe you should have focused a little bit more on the conditioning, <laughs> and that's where Pi Soto Cross actually picked up more of his. Um, that's where he picked up probably more of the rounds that he, that, you know, to me like let me switch the letter because just based off activity and the fact that he was starting to catch Devin with some punches um, towards the end of the fight. Uh, but it was yeah, But overall, they 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 both you know they both went out and it was just an absolutely pleasing um, fight to watch and it was a solid, very very solid opener. Um, and of course, Devin got the victory as he should. And uh, I mean, where it goes, I mean, Devin will probably make another run at the welterweight title, give or take. If he's gonna go after Sean Porter again, or try to go after somebody else. Uh, so Karras, I mean, who knows where he's going? I mean. Guys had, I mean, although the guy last year had probably one of the best comeback stories I've seen, you know, in a minute. Uh, you wonder where's he actually gonna go? Cause he's, you know, it's funny. I mean, does he stay at 147? Does he go up to 154? Does he even? I mean, I don't think he's gonna go down to 140. It's a little bit too loaded up. It's, 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 a, little, it's a little bit too loaded up there. But he, I mean, he's a good guy, and I don't really want to see him be relegated. Again, as like an opponent, a career opponent for somebody. Um, but um, I mean, I'm mean, great. I don't think he's done, and not in any sense of the word. But it's probably probably time to either just decide whether or not she just go one, stay at one point seven, or she just go go back to um, one hundred fifty four, or she's, she should he go to one fifty four. Um, so yeah, the next fight on the card was one I was anticipating for a while: uh, Gary Russell Jr. versus Vasil Lomachenko. Um, I was I was looking forward to this fight for a while because I'm a big I'm I'm a fan of Gary Russell. I I think he's I, I think he's an absolute hell of a talent. Um, and I'm also I'm a sucker for I'm a sucker for boxers who have that you know have that matrix like hand speed you know you know that type of hand speed. Um, I'm a big fan of that. Um, and of course you know you know he you know he had you know a couple of some really nice one punch knockouts. 
And on top of that, um, the biggest knock against Gary, though, is because he's been a pro for so long. And now, real, true step over competition. Most people were pretty much, you know, saying that, oh, he's chinny, oh, he needs to not as good as he's advertised, so on and so forth. Um, and then we have Lomachenko, who's just coming off his loss to Elena Salido. And now that fight, now, and as mentioned before, that fight rubbed me the wrong way. Because I, I do think highly of Elena Salido. I think he's a good, tough, good, tough, solid fighter. And for some reason, he always finds himself involved in these fights that, you know, that, you know, that obviously if he lost them, you know, it would be quite embarrassing. Like, you know, first it was the, um, it was the whole thing, Cruz, um, being, having to be involved in the hoopla with that. And then, Going straight from that um, to having to go deal with, you know, fighting a very decorated amateur fighter, you know, who's, who's fought almost 400 amateur fights, um, trying to win a world title in the second fight. Even though they, even though, even though, I, I, even though I would believe the World Series of Boxing were professional fights that six or seven that he did, that Lomachenko did, and I think, and I, and I honestly think that should be counted as pro fights because he did get paid for them. That's paid; those are paid fights. Um, but it is what it is. Regardless, just the fact that uh, he was coming in and trying to win a title in the second fight just rubbed me the wrong way. So I was glad that I mean, granted, although Salido had to use pretty much every every veteran trick in the book to do it. Um, that didn't happen, you know. I was happy about that, which led me to, you know, of course, one of his fights. Well, why was Lomachenko getting another shot at the belt after a loss? Um, so it was like, so even then, like I didn't. I mean, granted, I think well, Salido is definitely an education, uh, a, a very an education, and an advanced education if you ever fight him for a young fighter. I didn't think that. Uh, my God, I didn't think that Russell's. I didn't think Russell would have any problems because, like I said, he had like 24 fights, and he's been a pro for a minute. So it's like, how you know, how's Lomachenko gonna actually going to fight someone like that? Well, we got we got our answers. Um, the first thing to the first thing is I noticed that Lomachenko had a very noticeable size advantage over Gary. Um, even though the, uh, even though on the stats it said it wasn't Lomachenko just looked a lot bigger than Gary. So I was expecting, so uh, more or less, I was thinking, okay, Gary's just going to use a lot of lateral movement, a lot of, and just use his, um, use his hand speed. One thing about this fight that really was telling, and I, I won't say was telling with Gary, is he wasn't accurate. He was, he, he threw a lot of punches. Make no question, make no mistake about. It. He threw a lot of punches, but he just was not accurate. I mean, he was only well, what? He only landed like ten percent, and he threw more. I mean, that that that's you know that's that's a very that's a that's a bad that's a very bad flaw to have. And then also have that um, Little Chico is very defensively responsible. I mean, he won't open up just to open up, um, open himself up. And when he did open up, he uh, he you know he he got he timed Gary speed down and absolutely ripped him either with a you know with hard with a flush hard jab or right hand or most or most noticeably he was going to Gary's body. And that strategy paid off because in the middle, especially in the middle rounds, and I think in the fifth round, I think Lomachenko just absolutely was like hammering him like with some serious combinations to the body and head. And I think that's when I think the fight started to change some more to Lomachenko's favor. I mean, Gary, God bless him, he was trying. Uh, I mean, he was. I mean, he was. He was pressing forward. He was trying to put Lomachenko. Oh, he was trying to use the punches, but those punches were almost like shoe shines. They weren't like. They had no. They had no effect. And he did the one thing I, he started doing the one thing I hate, I, I hate enough that does this, um, you know, he starts barking after every shot, you know, hoo, hoo, hoo. you know, I can't stand that shot, I can't stand it at all. Uh, and you, I, I've never heard him do it before. Um, and the, and as the round's gone, like the body work and everything, I'm thinking was just absolutely just like hammering him to the body. And then in the final round, when in the final round the body work took hold and Lomachenko pretty much down in the last thirty seconds had him out on his feet, because um, Gary was going down at the bell. There was no question about that. Um, so my hats off to Lomachenko uh, for winning the bell in his third fight, tying the tying the record, tying the record. Um, he's going to be an interesting addition to the featherweight division. Um, now. 
Because then he's only thought, you know, officially three professional fights. You just wonder, like, who's they, who they get? I mean, did they give him a soft touch? Or, I mean, you, you, you're pretty much wondering where he's going to go or what he's going to do at this point. I mean, because pretty much damn near every every contender you can think of that he could be facing has has loads more experience than him. But we'll see. Like I said, there's still an upside for him. Um, granted, I, granted, like I said, he's defensively responsible enough, and he does pack me, and he does throw some nice combinations. And really, the only way you could really probably stop him is probably by being, you know, you have to be a very strong offensive player, just like Salido was in this in the, in that fight. So we'll see what happens. Um, as for Gary, I mean, he gave his first. I mean, the thing with the thing with that, I'm not gonna like. No, he's, Gary's gonna get a lot of criticism now for this fight. Saying you know you fought like two, you fought all these twenty four fights and you know you get you got beat by a guy who fought me three professional fights. Um, that's and he's not and yeah uh, and that's the, and he shouldn't get that criticism because Gary there's a lot of rumors floating around about Gary. Oh Gary has a weak chin. Oh he's just, you know he's not as good. I mean granted like I said you know Gary was flawed. I mean I mean five years. I mean he did have some flaws. I mean I'm, I'm not gonna lie that he didn't. Um, he was, I think the biggest flaw was just in that he was very inaccurate. And, um, and like I said, if he was, if he, if he was more, like I said, I think that was the thing that really killed him. Like I said, he probably, he, 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 was, he probably could have won this off activity. He was just more accurate with his punches, but he just wasn't. I mean, he, he moved forward and he, did, and he didn't adjust to when Lomachenko was absolutely ripping his midsection. He didn't adjust at all. Um, so. Little things here and there that you'll have to go back to the drawing board and try to work on and try to correct. Uh, I still think Gary's going to be. I still think Gary will pick up a title at some point um, in his career. I mean, I can't say he's going to be a beginner because, I mean, like I said, compared to Lomachenko, Lomachenko shouldn't even have won the belt in the first place. In you know, in comparison, but um, I still I think just those little things. I still think Gary can still be a force and can still be something. I just hope, like I said, you know, Gary doesn't get discouraged and he'll come back. Stronger, better than ever. Um, the next fight, the main event fight, was Robert Guerrero versus Yoshihiro Kamigai. Um Now, this fight, I was, I wasn't overly interested in. It was a comic fight, and I was more incredulous to even to find out that this was actually the main event. And I'm like, why would they put this as a main event over Gary Russell versus Lomachenko? I mean, that's the fight really on the card everyone was looking for. You know, looking for, um, and usually I was thinking, okay, this is just a fight for Guerrero to look you know, to look good in, and he's just going, he's gonna stop the guy, because I've seen I've seen kind of guy only in a couple fights beforehand, and you know my my impression of that is he gets hit, and he gets hit a lot. So um, with that being said, um, this was not a fight I was pegging to, you know, I was I was not pegging to be any any type of you know, competitive, much less be a fight of the year candidate. Uh, I was wrong on both ends, just like I was wrong about when I heard Lucas Matisse and John Molina <laughs> when we had when, when that fight happened. Um, this is a second fight of the year candidate, and it was a brutal, brutal, brutal fight. Um, beforehand, you heard all these comments with Robert talking about, oh yes, uh, he did CrossFit. Um, blah 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 blah. So he'll be a lot stronger, he's a lot faster. There's more snappers. It helps with his boxing. Um, CrossFit. CrossFit is. I mean, I, mean, I can't not CrossFit because CrossFit has gotten people that I've known, people who have necessarily have not been successful in the traditional, more traditional roles or methods of working out, and and they've gotten them right. Um, my own, and I do believe that some CrossFit techniques that are you know that that do work particularly well. Um, however, CrossFit does have what we call a high, very high risk of injury. I'm talking about some serious high risk injury, and they also can do love, you know, not so, you know, create bad form and all types of stuff. And I, I mean, if, so when you're saying in terms of boxing, I was like, I, I didn't see how it would really affect, how, how it would really benefit his boxing positively. Other than it's just another form of calisthenics or whatever so that boxer could probably do. Um, but Garcia, I mean, he did, I mean, not Garcia, excuse me, Guerrero did look like he was in condition, he was in, and, um, all the stuff that he was talking about, CrossFit, I didn't really see any of it on display, uh, 
either that or none of his boxing skills. Um, what I saw was a guy that just said, fuck it, and he's going to go slug it out. And slug it out he did. Those two kind of guy just absolutely just ripped each other with flush punches, uh, flush punches from 1 to 12. And it was funny, too, that this fight was 12 rounds, but not the Alexander Southern Cross fight was in 12 rounds. I wonder why that was. That doesn't make any sense. Because saying that Guerrero had the longer layoff. Um, Kamen Guy was get, no one told Kamen Guy that he was coming here to lay down after a couple rounds. And he put on an absolutely, you know, that fight just, it, it was reminiscent of the Arakawa Figueroa fight where, you know, the, where those two just literally tore into each other for 12 rounds. And this was just, then this was no different. This was an absolute brutal fight. Except Kamen Guy is a, is an actual known puncher and he, and he ripped. And they, uh, I, I mean, it was it was to the point where I, I just didn't even bother scoring. After like after the third or fourth round, I just I just sat back with my beer in my hand, started drinking, and started, started watching, and started typing my you know, typing my tweets about it and on the forums that I post on. Um, it, it was absolutely brutal. In the sixth round, I thought we were looking at upset when Kamen Guy absolutely just you know hit go around with up and closed his eye and started you know bashing him around. And so, what did Guerrero do? Instead of just in front of the box domain, came back out there and started punishing the guy. And Kamen Guy had just never been that type of fight. I think he had ever been 12 rounds. So by the 10th round, you, you could tell he was probably running on fumes, but he was still he was still going. I think I think it was either ninth or 10th round. He got hit with a monster shot, and he ate it. And he looked like he was ready to go, but he came back and just swinging. Um, the 12th round was a round was absolutely brutal from. From the time they touched gloves, they tore into each other again. And like, I don't think, okay, we're going to see a stoppage. Surprisingly, that was not the case. Um, it was it was absolutely, it was a great fight. It was a great brawl. I was not expecting anything like that um, from neither men. Uh, Guerrero, I was picking him to box. Come on, guy, I was picking him to get outboxed. Um, uh, so it, it, it was just an all, it was just an awesome fight to watch. I was, uh, I was, I was pleased, and you know, Grill himself admitted that he, you know, that he threw boxing in the bushes, and you know, he said, he, "Oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna trade with him," and you know, in a very fan friendly sort of But however, Grill needs to also have to cut that shit out because while he can do that with probably lesser fighters, you know, he's he's not gonna get away with that 147, not in the least. I mean, this is a guy that he wants fought again. <laughs> He's not, he, he, there's no way he, he fought like he did, and he's not going to get lit up, or he's not going to get countered like he was. Because, um, like I said, I didn't see any difference in the crossfit. The crossfit didn't really make him any faster. You know, if he looked the way he always did, just fighting gritty. I mean, he, he may have been in condition, you know, in good condition, but that's pretty much about it. I didn't see anything, I would say, that possibly affected his boxing. Uh, Kamen Guy probably just, I mean, he think, but Guerrero earned himself a million dollars for that, and Kamen Guy, I think, only got 75k, and usually when I see something like that, and the guy did not give a 75k, he gave, I mean, you give him at least a half a million, I think, all, you know, matter of fact, all the fighters on the card deserve a bonus of some sort, of sort, because, like I said, every fighter in there put in absolute great effort in, you know, in highly entertaining matches and made for a great card. And so far, like I said, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is definitely the card of the year so far. From time to time, it was, it was just, it was flawless. Um, or flawless it can be. Um, so yeah, I was pretty happy about it. It was, a, it was a pretty good night of boxing. And as of right now, I think the replay is going on. I have the TV on mute. And uh, I'm also downloading all those fights to put in my, uh, to put in my drive for later viewing. Um, so yep, yeah, so those are my thoughts about the fights, and I am hungry, so I'm about to go season up the steak and some, make some breakfast and whatnot, and enjoy this beautiful, sunny summer day. Alright y'all, till next time, peace.